Hello and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Dr. Westman. Um, today we're going to be chatting about boosting your immunity. How are you, Eric? I'm well. How are you going? What a nice shirt you've got on there. Where did you get that shirt from? Well, thanks. Um, this shirt I'm wearing in honor of the Keto Fastosis Warriors in Indonesia. I was able to be at the first conference there uh, in 2019. Uh, and I just uh, am thinking about our friends in Indonesia and uh, Tio and all of his group. They have hundreds of thousands of people doing keto and, uh, and fasting as part of their culture. Uh, so anyway, this is an Indonesian shirt in honor of the Keto Fastosis Warriors. This, I think this was in 2019 where you went to Keto Fastosis, right? Yeah. In 2020, a whole lot's changed. I mean, boy, oh boy, have things changed in the last couple of months. Well, then we were traveling doing the Adapt Keto events on Saturdays, and that our last one got stopped right in the early 2020. We we're lucky to get the one in Long Beach in, and then unfortunately the two were canceled. And hopefully we plan on picking them up again February, March of 2021. So you're watching. Yeah, yeah. Sean Sean Baker, uh, the carnivore guru, was there in Long Beach. That's right. Uh, Amy Savajan, a a friend uh, in the obesity world. And yeah, what a great thing. uh, What what a great concept the ADAPT events are to bring people locally and I'm going to do that. And they're fun. And they're fun as well. Get to meet some new people. It's awesome. So, Eric, with COVID-19 causing such havoc around the world, um, we've, we've heard them speak about the fact that um, you need to have a strong immune system. Um, and it's very, very important to have the strong immune system. Would you agree with that? Um, is this something that you've heard in the literature? Yeah, well, I, I think it's common sense, right? <laughs> if we're dealing with an infectious disease that you need to fight with an immune system. So you have to understand that we actually have like soldiers and armies in our body to fight these viruses and bacteria and a strong immune system is very important. Um, uh, And there are things that weaken your immune system uh, that, you know, has played out to be a bad thing with COVID-19 too. Now, I don't want to make the jump um, straight away by saying that because you're on a keto diet, all of a sudden you have a strong immune system. But I do want to mention there was a study, uh, a recent study that was done, uh, a mouse study. And I know that you're not uh, particularly fond of animal studies, but this particular study was a mouse study. And um, what, they, what they found was that um, it triggered the release of, um, of, of uh, mucus in the cell linings of the lungs, which trapped the flu virus. So um, this is this is a uh, this is a study that was done by Yale on with mice fed a ketogenic type of diet. What do you say to studies like that? Well, it, that's very interesting, and it um, uh, might apply to people. I, um, I would rather so. I, I yes, I do. <laughs> I am human centric, meaning in the keto world I, I, and diet world, I want studies in people. And I'm really cautious about extrapolating animal studies to humans because there are a lot of steps that could make it not work out that way. So not being an an expert in the immune system, the model they used, it might be that it correlates directly to human, uh, uh, um, human experience. I just don't know. So generally speaking, I, I think it's very interesting. And when there's one study, of course, you always want the second one to validate it, uh, hopefully by a different group or, or that they did it twice in their own lab. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I didn't know that that was a possible mechanism of the mucus. Uh, I think more in terms of the immune system, the cells that, that work to fight uh, infections. So the the immunity of the T cells, the B cell, the that the lymph system, uh, but that's that's an intriguing study, and um, just goes to show there's a lot we don't understand uh, about keto and diets and immunity. And the more, but the more we study keto in general, the better it looks metabolically. You know, 
20 years ago, we thought ketosis was bad and it was ketoacidosis and you want to stay away. And now we call it nutritional ketosis and it's not ketoacidosis. And it actually, ketones has, uh, ketones have these effects on the inflammatory system and the immune system. And um, I would still say that's not, you know, not ready for prime time. You know, the, it's an early study and I wouldn't, you know, uh, tell my patients, you know, it's definitive by any means. Now, we know that people um, with type 2 diabetes, uh, metabolic syndrome, hypertension, these metabolic type of related illnesses are at a greater risk um, for COVID-19. Um, would, uh, would I be assuming correctly that if we could reverse these conditions, um, that the risk would be reduced if we could completely reverse the type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and obesity? Would, the, would that risk be reversed? Uh, well, the first idea is definitely true. So you pick up a medical journal now, and it's, uh, uh, you're going to find an article about diabetes, obesity being risk factors for worse outcomes uh, for COVID-19. So if you have an underlying metabolic problem like that and you get ill and you get in the hospital, you have a higher mortality, you have a, a higher rate of dying. Um, before that, you can look at the percentage of people that have the disease, COVID-19, and there's a high rate of obesity and diabetes, more than you would expect in the general population. So we think that it puts you at higher risk for getting the disease and then if you do get it, if you have diabetes or, or other metabolic problems, uh, obesity, uh, you'll have worse outcomes. Now, it doesn't directly, you can't directly conclude that had you fixed, had you not had diabetes and obesity, you'll have better outcomes, you won't get it. But it's a strong indicator about that. You know, first you find correlations and then, um, I don't think that anyone will go back and randomize you to have diabetes and get COVID-19 though. So there will never be the randomized experimental trial that you want. But certainly this is making most experts say that you, know, you don't want to uh, have diabetes or metabolic problems, uh, obesity, uh, because it puts you at higher risk for COVID-19 and worse outcomes. Now, scientifically, we didn't we haven't done the study to prove that, but the uh, logic of it makes sense. Uh, we observe that there are higher rates. Uh, so, you know, I've known for a long time that the higher the blood sugar is over the daily, over the day, the, the worse the immune system functions. Even the immune cells don't function as well. Uh, I was taught if the blood sugar is over 200 all day long, you're, you're, blood cells don't work properly. And, and that was you know, training from years ago. So there are um, findings or, or changes that occur when the blood sugar is high all day long, that's called diabetes, and they're not good. Uh, di people with diabetes are at higher rate of skin infections, for example, which lead to amputations. And um, uh, so the... the um, experience about diabetes and obesity lends it to, yeah, it kind of makes sense that you would be at higher risk and then um, to get the disease and to have worse outcomes. So I uh, would just imagine that this is a topic that definitely needs more research. Unfortunately, as you correctly pointed out, um, we're not going to get those randomized controlled trials or studies uh, that you mentioned. No, but I guess thinking this through, if you're, you know, quarantine, your stay-at-home order, um, why not work on your metabolic health, right? Uh, especially if um, if you're now working at home, you you're, you have more time to devote to the uh, preparing of food or getting food. Uh, now is the time to work on a metabolic health. I know I've noticed some people start to look a little more muscular because they've gotten the, the workout machine and they're, they're taking this year and maybe a year of this uh, to you know, get on the exercise kick. Why not get on the nutrition kick, the diet kick, uh, learn about how carbs can be bad 
for the health. Um, and um, not everyone needs to do keto, um, but I think we need to be clear that sugar and sugar in large amounts uh, can elevate the blood sugar, cause diabetes, and that's kind of the bad guy of the, the world, a metabolic health world today. Not fat anymore, it's, it's the sugar. Well, it certainly couldn't, uh, couldn't hurt if uh, people found a little bit of extra time to try and implement this. This would be the best time to try and do it. Um, well, and you, know, you actually end up eating less, right? Because right. if you have extra uh, energy on your body in the form of fat, you know, a lot of people look at that as obesity and it's really terrible. No, this is energy that would keep you alive in a famine. Right. And so all, all we do on a low-carb diet is have you not eat the sugar and burn the sugar and your body figures out you, know, you start burning fat and it starts burning its own body fat. So actually many people eat less. And so if, you have, if you're struggling to juggle even, uh, I don't know how to communicate this clearly, but if, if you're trying to juggle finances and, and rent and food, and you can actually eat less and, and fix your metabolic problems and not even pay for medications anymore just by changing the food and cutting out the carbs. Uh, I have people who are spending lots of money on medications and, and uh, I give them the choice of, well, you don't need to spend the money on meds, medications, if you address the food and the lifestyle. So uh, a lot of people are taking this pause in the, the travel, can't travel, can't go around to address their metabolic health and uh, physical health. So um, let's move on to a couple of questions that I have. I've got three different questions. The first one is from Merlin. And Merlin asks, Dr. Westman, um, I know you've done some research into cigarette smoking. Do you think immune health is compromised from smoking, even though I've been on a keto diet for roughly two years? Hmm. <laughs> well, that's, that? well, I spent 10 years working on research for smoking cessation and nicotine, and um, definitely a, a smoker, uh, half pack a day, so 10 cigarettes a day, or more, had, they're more likely to get respiratory infections, uh, like bronchitis, uh, chronic bronchitis. So, um, uh, I don't, you know, I've been out of that world a little too long to comment on the latest understanding. I guess the, the, the short answer would be, you know, try to quit smoking. Yeah, I, you know, there's um, uh, very little to speak for the benefits of smoking. However, <laughs> many people use it for stress reduction uh, they're, or they're just purely addicted to it. I, I would be um, uh, hard pressed to say that there was really any health benefit from smoking. This guy's obviously smoking on the one hand, doing a keto diet on the other hand. Uh, smoking can't be any good for your immune system. Um, and he's trying to negate the, the, the good points about the keto diet. I would just suggest probably just uh, try to cut down or try and stop smoking. Yeah. And, you know, um, although I, I should show the kind of, I'm not an all or nothing thinker really, you know, even uh, about this because um, uh, there are, I know there are studies of giving vitamin C to people who smoke to try to reduce the cancer risk. And um, the all or nothing thinker said, well, we'll just get everyone to quit. Well, the reality is that there still are something like 25% of people who smoke. So the reality is most people can't quit unless you, you know, um, outlaw it and then there would be bootleg and well and, and all the taxes that come from you know, so it's a it's a complicated issue kind of like food where we kind of know here's the science and then the implementation is that way but um i did help to do the initial studies on this medicine called chantix where the idea was uh, um born in a, a different type of drug but anyway um I, yeah my advice is with my patients is I'll, I'll help you quit. <laughs> Next question is from Natalie and she asks, I have, or she says, I have type two diabetes and overweight. Um, uh, I, if I start a keto diet now, how long do you think it would take to improve immune, my immune system or immune health? 
Um, do you have a, a definitive answer for that or is it something that's um, not known? Well, my understanding is that if the blood sugar, that's the blood glucose, the A1C, hemoglobin A1C is a reflection of it, it, it all kind of hangs together. If your blood glucose is high, you can have immediate improvement in immune function if you lower the blood glucose. So I think the benefits are probably quick, pretty quick. Uh, now, how, how big is that benefit? I don't know for sure, but there are... Um, Fair, so on the first day of dropping the carbs, of doing a keto diet, the blood sugar can come down 50 to 100 points in the milligram per deciliter system. Uh, so that would be, you know, five, six to seven points or so, six to eight in the other uh, millimole system. So the blood glucose comes down really quickly. And so I, I'm op an optimist in that regard that I think it could help your immune function very quickly to cut out carbohydrates if your blood sugar is very high. Uh, now, uh, in my experience using a keto diet for weight loss, I see about a pound or two of weight loss per week. So a, a half kilo to a kilo of weight loss per week. So that's you know five to 10 pounds per month, 50 to 100 pounds per year. Uh, uh, and that will get the immune benefits over that period of time. Uh, but, you know, you have to understand my mindset, my way of thinking is that if there is a possibility that it will help and it will do no harm, why, why wouldn't you try it? As opposed to, well, there's no evidence that there, you know, you can't, you know, if it's a, if all you're doing is, you know, eating great food, <laughs> like meat, poultry, fish and shellfish and eggs, uh, the uh, downside is pretty low. Okay, and I've got my last question that's from Barbara, and she asks, is there a test to determine immune health that you know of? Um, not that I use clinically every day. Um, in fact, uh, the white blood cells in our blood are, are the ones that fight infection, and they do go up if you have an infection. Um, but I don't think that it's affected by other factors as well. Um, but you can, uh, if someone is, is sick, you can see a pattern of blood cells change. The white cells and the type of the white cells um, will change if you're sick. But it's, I don't think it's sensitive enough, meaning it, it won't uh, give you an indication if you're not otherwise um, sick so if you're healthy and you just want to see how your immune function is i don't think that would be a, a great test of it um, there may be some tests you can get at a research or specialized laboratory but i'm not aware of that um, uh, i think focusing on the the glucose keeping that down um, and um, take, staying away from sugar as much as you can um, uh, will will go a long way well, another fascinating topic and uh, one that could certainly always do with more research as with uh, a lot of these topics that we discuss on a regular basis. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Westman. Um, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please find us on our social media channels on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter under the name of Adapt Your Life. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the notification bell to be alerted every time we post one of these videos, which is typically on a Wednesday. If you enjoyed this video, please would you give it a like and a share? It would mean the absolute world to us. This is Dr. Westman and Glenn uh, Finkel signing off of another episode of Conversations with Dr. Westman. Until next week. Thank you so much, Eric. I really appreciate your time once again. Thank you, man. Thank you. If you like this video, you're going to love our Adapt Your Life Academy. So click on the link in the description to find out more.